thank you, Britis and Mauro, once again for the invitation. As it was as said, my task here is to uh, let me get set. Yeah. So this is a review on the use of integrase inhibitors in childhood and adolescence. These are my disclosures. Um, what I intend to approach, uh, two topics. It's an update on epidemiology and uh, on antiretroviral optimization and the use of integrase inhibitor in children. And next, I will uh, approach a current treatment guidelines, recommendations, and real-world uh, data. The most important uh, you know, is to make it clear that our progresses have been very, very little in uh, decreasing new infections. We are nearly stagnated since 2015 with uh, a reduction of about 10,000 cases per year. If we keep this base, it will take us another 14 years to reach the target that was established about three years ago, less than 20,000 infections per year. So there's a lot to, to do. What is the problem? Where are these women and where are these new infections? They become infected, uh, they get infected during pregnancy or during uh, breastfeeding. But about half of the patients are not identified or actually are not treated during pregnancy. Other discontinue, about 22, and only 8% of women under treatment do not reach indetectable viral load. So our problem is clearly associated to uh, diagnosis and early intervention as well as it, uh, adequate treatment to the women. In our uh, region of Latin America, this is the cascade of uh, treatment, uh, testing and treatment. You see how the pediatric population is uh, lags behind compared to, to the adult population. This is a classical... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You see that our uh, viral suppression in uh, children under treatment in Latin America is lower than 40%. That's why we have the need to optimize treatment and have better therapeutic regimens for this particular population. And what does it mean to optimize a pediatric uh, treatment? You have to include the, all these characteristics, such as reduced toxicity, good palatability, and low pill burden, low frequency of drug-drug interaction, high genetic uh, barrier uh, the drug should uh, allow for harmonization, uh, and at last uh, it should uh, be affordable. So the f three first characteristics will allow for a better adherence. The uh, other two in the middle the um, the powerful approach will ensure viral suppression and clinical response in the last two characteristics will ensure that you will implement uh, or effectively implement uh, these interventions at the populational level. This is an age uh, world health organization or WHO uh, a slide that serves as a guideline for you to assess new interventions based on the drugs that are uh, feasible. This is particularly important to, to the po pediatric population since it is a neglected uh, uh, disease. In adult HIV, you have a, wall, a, a whole a wide range uh, of expanded pharmaceutical weapons, but in children it represents less than 20 percent of drugs, classes, and pharmaceuticals or isolated or in combination available. You know.
in the end of the day, what we actually want is for you to establish a treatment that can be used throughout the life cycle. So starting, let me see how to use the pointer. Well, never mind. Well, starting with the pregnant women, uh, going to children, adolescents, adults, uh, young adults, and, or the elderly, this must be our goal. And uh, in that sense, we should uh, try to find out uh, the role of integrase inhibitors uh, as a therapeutical agent to the pediatric populations. We have four integrase inhibitors approved, FDA approved for use in children and adults. Uh, integrase inhibitors have as characteristics, uh, a virological efficacy, low drug-drug interaction rates, and uh, a favorable toxicity. However, Bictagravir and Elvitagravir are only available in a combined fixed dosage. They are released for use by FDA, but they are not recommended by the World Health Organization. And another characteristic, uh, you know, you have t two generations of integrase inhibitors. The second generation of integrase inhibitors will include dolutegravir and bictegravir, and they are more uh, powerful compared to raltegravir and elvitegravir. This is a systematic review performed by the London uh, group, the uh, University College of London and uh, Claire Townsend uh, did it on the demand of the World Health Organization and uh, to draw recommendations that the World Health Organization's consensus group release sporadically. So you see the, the dimensions are quite different. In adults, we are used to seeing studies with thousands uh, of uh, patients recruited, but in uh, studies with children are dozens or hundreds. I mean, dolutegravir, 11 studies included 2,300 patients. Raltegravir, in 10, 10 studies included less than uh, 650 children and adolescents. It shows its scarcity of data for this population. But what is actually important is that virological suppression reached by dolutegravir, be it in first line or second line patients, was quite high, above 70% in this very uh, different, these are very heterogeneous groups that were reported on the publication in the uh, Journal of International AIDS Society, February last year. On the other hand, uh, Raltegravir did not do that well. Raltegravir, the viral, viral suppression was quite variable from 42 to 83 uh, percent with 12, at 12 months. So now it is quite clear the uh, superiority of dolutegravir over raltegravir. On the other hand, both have a very favorable safety profile. The group concludes uh, this study saying that uh, further studies for long-term follow-up are required, particularly real-world studies that will allow for long-term toxicity detection. I will show you here two major studies very quickly. This is a very busy slide, I agree, but this is just the first study that uh, helped inform WHO and other regulatory organization on the use of dolutegravir in the pediatric population. This is the ADSE. The ADSE was performed by the European group in African countries. This is actually the only randomized study with a two 
randomized, non-inferiority randomized two-arm study. Uh, what I'd like to call your attention to, these are two groups. One group, uh, uh, beginning uh, therapy, first line, the other one, second line. But it shows that the Lutegravir was superior to standard, uh, you know, of care, which was efavirenz. It was superior in, a, uh, in the group that started it in second line. This data is available, uh, were available on New England two years ago. It also showed that this uh, 96 week study showing a good safety profile. And the second study is the Impact 1093, which several Brazilian scientists uh, participated, including ourselves from uh, the Federal University of Minas Gerais, defining the pharmacokinetic parameters of the Tegravir in different populations. This is a, a multiple cohort studies with a multiple formulation, starting always with the um, with a mini cohort where you do an intensive pharmacokinetic, define the ideal dosage, and then you go forward to the full cohort per formulation, in including 50 milligram uh, tablets, you know, uh, adult formulations, and then to the lower, younger cohort under six for dispersive uh, five milligram dispersable five milligram tablets. These two studies, these two studies I show you just to highlight that they were fundamental to the regulation and approval of dolutegravir and the inclusion of it in uh, the uh, WHO recommendations. Going forward to the actual recommendations and uh, the real world data, this is a compilation of the guidelines starting with the uh, P Brazilian PCDT uh, guidelines and then uh, going through the World Health Organizations, the North American recommendations, as well as the European guidelines recommendations. What I'd like to call your attention to is that you know, we, f to the fact that we were finally able to reach harmonization starting on week four. So all guidelines, they agree on the first line treatment. We still have a gap though, which is the neonates and especially under 14 days of life, which is a critical population because you remember that the UNAIDS, UNS, UNAIDS cases, new cases in a, from women that are not uh, timely diagnosed, so we need to have an, an earlier intervention. So and this is the actual gap the scientific gap that uh, persists, is that there is still an open question, particularly on the safety of dolutegravir in populations under, ten, uh, under two weeks of life. Talking about the geographical regions, I mean, and, and globally, what is the reality of dolutegravir implementation and adoption? You see that up to one year ago, 45 countries had already purchased and uh, included dolutegravir to the treatment of pediatric population. This is a unique progress in uh, HIV treatment uh, for us who have been dealing with uh, this problem for decades. So really, it is a population that is already making the difference and we expect it to be so. What worked? What worked was the very quick introduction, the high level of acceptance and a good virological response. What is still to be defined? Inexperienced, inexposed patients, inexperienced children. And how will you ensure 
a treatment to those uh, fortunately few children who don't tolerate dolotegravir. And at last, what is important, we needed to monitor long-term events. No drugs being uh, prescribed to a population that we don't know much, uh, as Isabella showed. Isabella showed the uh, uh, survey, uh, as she showed the um, association of dolotegravir with the neural tube defects. I mean, and we must know how dolotegravir uh, uh, works in the long term. To date, we have one year, two year study, so we need to expand this database, if you will. In Latin America and the Caribbean, this is the original situation uh, where it was implemented very quickly. The, and keeping in mind that in Brazil, Dolotegra, 5 milligram dolotegravir dispersible tablet is already available for prescription, and that was a great progress, uh, progress in our weaponry for the pediatric population. The two last slides on real uh, world data. This is a study of the Baylor uh, group. Jaser Bakker and colleagues studied, uh, studied the performance of children and adolescents in Africa. These are six countries, actually. And uh, whenever they sh switch from uh, protease inhibitor to dolutegravir, viral suppression under uh, PIs would be 81.9. It kept the same when switched to dolutegravir. But the most important thing is that those patients who were not suppressed, 68 of those who were not suppressed with the PIs, 68% uh, uh, became suppressed with, after switching to dolotegravir. This suppression was uh, lower, it's important to highlight, in girls and in elder or older adolescents from 15 to 19. So I believe that these studies bring some very important issues. Switching is safe and effective in patients under uh, PI to dolotegravir, although they're not completely suppressed. And, and it uh, raises a flag for older adolescents and girls, particularly to the uh, potential of adherence and access of uh, this population to uh, favorable treatment and environments favorable for treatment. And at last, it's an advertisement. This is a study that we are carrying out in Brazil, a multi-centric study funded in collaboration with VIV. Uh, with eight different centers in Brazil to assess this particular issue, Effective in, effectiveness and long-term safety of dolotegravir. We, I'm not sure Cynthia is here with us. Yeah, there she is. She is our great collaborator here in Salvador. So there are centers in Salvador, Bahia, Manaus, Belém, uh, two centers in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio de Janeiro in Nova Iguaçu, actually Florianópolis, Curitiba, and Belo Horizonte. This is just a first overview of this study. We have two cohorts, the 6 to 12 years cohort using the 50 milligram dolotegravir robot. This is the adult formulation. We've already recruited 185 patients and it's already uh, closed. I mean, in the four weeks to six years of age uh, cohort using five milligram dispersible tablet, we are recruiting patients. To date, we only have 11, but we expect to get to about 40 participants in the next three months. At last, I would like to show you the uh, vir viral virological suppression profile. Up to the week 72, we have a decreased number of patients, about 40 patients who reached the week 72. Virological suppression 
is above 90 percent. So results are very well, very, uh, uh, very promising. Sorry. And at last, I see Hannah uh, with the timer letting me know that my time is over. But I'd like to tell you that we are seeing a very small decline in new pediatric infections since 2015. Dolutegravir is a preferred treatment for infants and children and, and adolescents, uh, expanded with good virological response, but we cannot feel uh, winners yet. We need new drugs, we need long-term monitoring and follow-up, particularly with regards to long to, uh, to weight gain, metabolic alterations, and neuropsychiatric complications. At last, these are my acknowledgements to those I got uh, slides, uh, I borrowed slides from. Thank you.